the Apple event, WWDC, has just concluded. And honestly, AI has a new full form. It's no longer artificial intelligence because Apple has renamed it as Apple Intelligence. So much has happened. I'm going to give you the entire lowdown. But in a nutshell, we have Apple Intelligence, which is a lot more personalized. Siri has become supercharged. The iPad now has a calculator. I know you associate Apple with the iPhone event in September. But honestly, this big WWDC at Apple Park is perhaps monumental. It's a historic day for the company and for the technology world. Let me explain in this special segment on Tech Today. Hello yet again from Apple Park. That behind me, of course, is where WWDC just wrapped up with their keynote address outside the iconic Steve Jobs Theatre, where we attended a fireside chat between Craig Federici and John Ginandria talking about Apple's AI bet and why it's so significant. I'll walk a little bit and sink in and let it all sink in in terms of what announcements were made. Of course, AI has been rechristened, relabeled by Apple, not anymore will we call it artificial intelligence, they're calling it Apple intelligence. This AI push was needed, the market was hoping for it as well because Nvidia has really been soaring up in terms of their market gap and what the AI chips are doing. Apple of course relies on its own version of silicon but now that hardware will finally have software to really realize its full potential. Now, what are the AI features that are coming? Of course, Siri, the original assistant over a decade old, seemed to be a bit underpowered. But now things are different. And why do I say they're different? Because Siri will now be supercharged. It can do things which it couldn't do before. You can search for things within the iPhone, within the Photos app, all sorts of stuff with Siri as an assistant and also across the Apple ecosystem. So that's on Mac, on iPad, on your Apple Watch as well. The Apple Watch is getting a bunch of updates when it comes to software. All of this has gone live this week itself in the developer beta mode. You'd obviously have these really coming to market in their final polished form closer towards September when the new iPhones and devices are launched. But this event and the word on the street and the sort of mood of the event has been is more significant for Apple even than its hardware launches because this is the pivot that we've all been waiting for at Apple Park, which happens to be the big AI push that I was talking about. What else really comes in? There was so many murmurs and rumors of chat GPT coming to the iPhone and all the jugar we've been doing to get the voice assistant on your iPhone doesn't need to be done because all you need now is an iPhone 15 Pro or above and Apple has actually partnered with OpenAI. Sam Altman of OpenAI tweeted saying he's really excited about this partnership. Elon Musk doesn't seem very happy. And um, OpenAI with ChatGPT will be coming on the iPhone. Now, if you're worried about privacy and your data, because Apple has been known for being a closed ecosystem. Now, the fact is that if we actually have some of these apps coming in and these LLMs coming in, how does it work in that sort of closed ecosystem? Well, Apple has promised that all of this data will be on device in a private cloud and well, third parties won't be able to access it. But if you're using ChatGPT, there will be a prompt where the iPhone or the Apple device will ask you whether you want to use ChatGPT and actually start entering your prompts over there and getting that sort of output. This can be supercharged in terms of the results coming in. It's a big deal for OpenAI as well because of the number of iPhones and data that they'll be getting, a billion iPhones nearly. But Craig Federici and Apple are calling this AI for the rest of us. This is AI for the rest of us. Personal intelligence you can rely on at work, home, and everywhere in between. Because the other companies, Microsoft, Google, all of them have been looking at AI for enterprise, AI for business, AI on the cloud. But over here, this seems to be, well, a very consumer-centric announcement when it comes to AI. When a really interesting announcement as well was iPad finally getting the calculator app. Now that sounds very insignificant for the layman, but it's a big deal because Apple, for the longest time, was not giving you a calculator app for the iPad. They said that when we get it right, we'll finally give you that app. 
and today is the day that that app has come. You can do all sorts of cool mathematical calculations. You can also use your Apple Pencil right on an iPad and then solve complex mathematical equations using AI, machine learning. A lot of this was stuff that we had expected for a long time. There's call recording on iPhones as well. The list is endless. And what do we really make of it? There's always two camps, the ones who love what Apple does and genuinely are fanboys. And then there's the Android guys who always say, well, come on, this was on Android a long time ago. Let's just look at the rebranding of AI. Classic Apple move, Apple intelligence. You won't know AI the same way. And honestly, I truly believe that AI needs to be made for all. Let's have a look at what the others are doing out here in California, especially. OpenAI, of course, is making waves at ChatGPT, but they've sort of joined hands with Apple in this case. Greg Federici, in a separate session from Apple, also said that they will be looking at bringing your favorite AI apps or platforms, integrating your favorite AI LLMs into the Apple ecosystem. And he didn't rule out that Google Gemini might be coming soon as well. That's the big deal everyone in tech has been talking about. And that seems to be a conversation that they might be having. So imagine bringing the best of Google Gemini, bringing the best of ChatGPT into the Apple ecosystem. It's a historic day, a big bet. And honestly, the one thing we know, if we even get into the smartphone consumer space, Samsung came out with Galaxy AI, but they didn't really make much of a splash, just a dent. Then, of course, we had Google with Gemini, but the implementation has not been that blockbuster. The one thing Apple does, like we say in Hindi, they rai, but durustai. They come in late, they swoop in late, but they are absolutely blockbuster in their implementation, very slick, very intuitive, and the whole world stands up and takes notice. So, well, that's something that we're really looking forward to as tech enthusiasts. We'll be bringing you a lot more from this flagship Apple event coming days. But for now, this is our first impressions of WWDC on Tech Today. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.